Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, rich countries hold the majority of COVID-19 vaccine supplies, report states. Vigils to be held across Argentina as Congress votes on abortion bill. At least eight protesters killed in ongoing unrest in Kurdish provinces in Iraq. And finally, we look at the challenges before Venezuela's new National Assembly. In our first story, dozens of poor countries may be unable to provide COVID-19 vaccines for nearly 90% of their population next year. This is a direct result of rich countries holding a majority of the vaccine supplies. These figures have been published in a report by the People's Vaccine Alliance. The alliance, which comprises organizations such as Oxfam and Amnesty International, has called for dramatic action to ensure universal access to safe and necessary vaccines. While being home to 14% of the world's population, wealthy countries have purchased 53% of the total stock of the vaccines. The surplus is to the extent that these countries will be able to vaccinate their populations three times over. In comparison, countries such as the Philippines are at present unable to purchase vaccines for nearly 99% of their population. Out of the three potential vaccines, almost all available stocks of Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech have already been bought by rich countries. Moreover, pharmaceutical companies are using public research funds to develop technology and then enforcing exclusive property rights. The People's Vaccine Alliance along with organizations such as Medicines on Frontiers, are urging for transparency and cooperation to increase global supplies and ensure access to vaccines across the world. In our next story, the Chamber of Deputies of the National Congress of Argentina is set to debate the voluntary termination of pregnancy, IVE bill, on December 11th and 12th. People across the country have been organizing to urge legislators to decriminalize and legalize abortion services. Large-scale mobilizations had also taken place when the bill was previously presented in 2018. While the bill was approved then by the House of Representatives, it was ultimately rejected by the Senate. The new bill which has been presented under the administration of President Alberto Fernandez establishes that a person can access abortion services till the 14th week of the pregnancy. Beyond the 14th week, 14 week mark, however, these services will be available only in cases when there is a threat to life or if the pregnancy has resulted from rape. The bill further mandates that public and private health professionals are required to respond to patient requests within a maximum of 10 days. Vigils will be held near the National Congress building in Buenos Aires as well as in plazas across the country. The call was given by the National Campaign for the Right to Legal, Safe and Free Abortion. The campaign also urged people to flood social media networks with the hashtag LegalAbortion2020 and hold public gatherings as the bill is debated and voted upon. In our next story, at least eight people have reportedly been killed as protests continue in the Kurdistan regions of Iraq. Deaths were reported on Monday and Tuesday as security forces and ruling party Kader opened fire to disperse the crowds. The protesters had gathered to demand the timely dispersal of salaries and the creation of more jobs. Thousands of teachers and government employees gathered in peaceful protests which began on December 3rd. They had alleged widespread corruption in the regional government. The Kurdistan regional government, led by Nechriwan Barzani, has not dispersed salaries to its nearly 1.2 million employees since October. While the administration says that there is a lack of funds, the protesters have accused government officials of appropriating public funds. As a result, protesters have demanded that Barzani resign and that fresh elections be held in the region. Violence broke out on December 7th as police forces deployed tear gas and water cannons to prevent protesters from marching. Similar tactics were used in other districts as well. Protesters responded by setting fire to the offices of the major political party, ruling political parties, namely the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, the Kurdistan Democratic Party and Goran of the Change Movement. This was near the capital Erbil. Six people were killed and nearly 26 people were injured that day. President Barham Saleh has urged the regional government to desist from the use of force. Opposition parties have also accused the ruling party of engaging in political vendetta. The violence was also condemned by the Iraqi Commission of Human Rights and the UN Assistance Mission for Iraq. And finally, the ruling Grand Patriotic Poll Alliance has won the elections for Venezuela's National Assembly. Here is a video feature on the elections and what's next for the new parliament.
desde aquí desde Venezuela, le decimos al mundo entero, hoy, los de a pie, las cocineras como yo y mucho del movimiento popular, vamos al frente de la asamblea a poner puntos específicos en nuestras leyes para recuperar nuestra patria, porque la patria no se vende, se defiende y para nosotros es una necesidad, es una obligación cuidar nuestra patria que ha sido tan golpeada, tan golpeada por un imperio, un, un imperio que quiere ser la policía del mundo, un imperio que no nos perdona que aquí tengamos casa de alimentación, que tenemos la educación gratuita, que tengamos una salud de calidad y prueba de eso fue todo como nosotros combatimos el COVID. Prueba de eso es que aquí está la gran misión vivienda de Venezuela y nosotros vivimos en espacios dignos. Si nosotros tenemos dificultades, la vamos a recuperar y la vamos a resolver entre nosotros. No aceptamos injerencia de ningún eh, país extranjero que quiera, que quiera destruir nuestra patria con el engaño de que nos van a ayudar y lo que quieren es apoderarse de nuestra riqueza. Nosotros tenemos problemas, lo vamos a resolver entre los venezolanos. Y esta es una prueba grandísima de democracia. que abandone la ruta extremista, que aproveche la derrota de Donald Trump para abandonar la agenda intervencionista de Estados Unidos, que le pidamos en una sola voz el levantamiento de todas las sanciones al nuevo gobierno de Estados Unidos de Joe Biden. En una sola voz se le pida a nombre de Venezuela se levanten todas las sanciones. Hoy se elige una nueva Asamblea Nacional. Hoy nace una nueva Asamblea Nacional. El próximo 5 de enero, Venezuela tendrá un nuevo poder parlamentario, legítimo, constitucional, legal. Y empezaremos a trabajar por una nueva era de recuperación del bienestar perdido, de recuperación del terreno de la calidad de vida de los venezolanos, de la lucha por la felicidad y el desarrollo de nuestro país. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,